So as you were saying, if you want to do, so was this Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Anti-Markovnikov, anti the electronegative element ended up on the less substituted carbon. Why did it end up being anti-Markovnikov? Well, the boron goes to the less substituted carbon because of steric hindrance. And then the alcohol replaces the boron, so it's on the less substituted. Remember, this reaction, which I've left up here for reference, is the other way to put in an alcohol group. And here, the alcohol ends up on the more substituted carbon, Markovnikov. So this is a sin anti-Markovnikov addition, whereas this one up here is a Markovnikov. So you want to have these reactions in pairs so you can compare them in your notes. All right. So far, so good. All right. Now, like I said, the most important thing here is to know how to get to the predict the product here at this point. You should know the mechanism. So the parts of the mechanism here that I think that you should usually draw are the parts I have on the board. The other parts of the mechanism you shouldn't probably draw unless the problem asks you, because they're too complicated. However, you might be asked to do the whole mechanism. So let's review that on page four of the handout. Does everyone have the Alkene's handouts? Looking at page four. And this goes through a couple of points that we didn't talk about yet. the reaction, and then in the middle we show the mechanism, the hydrogen and the boron attacking at the same time. Now the first note that the handout made that we didn't talk about here is if there's not too much steric hindrance, this boron will actually go on to attack two more alkenes before we get to the second step over here. So notice what happened in the first step is that the boron lost one of its hydrogens while it attacked an alkene, but it still has two hydrogens left. So theoretically, this boron could go on to attack two more alkenes with its other two hydrogens. And so ultimately, if there's not too much steric hindrance, you would actually end up with one molecule of boron attacking three separate alkenes. This is true. However, it doesn't give you that much insight, I don't think, into the mechanism. So it's usually not worth drawing. But it's good to know that the boron actually goes on to attack two more alkenes. And then I showed the mechanism of the oxidation. One thing to notice from the mechanism of the oxidation is it would seem like, if you were just guessing, you would probably guess that this OH came from this hydroxide. If you were just guessing, you would think that the OH came from the hydroxide, but it actually comes in a complicated, well, this oxygen actually comes from the hydrogen peroxide. There's a whole complicated mechanism. We'll just talk our way through it. You can see first the hydroxide deprotonates the hydrogen peroxide. And then the oxygen and the hydrogen peroxide joins the boron. And then there's what's called a migration. The carbon migrates from the boron to the oxygen. There's a migration where the carbon migrates from the boron to the oxygen. And that's the step where we get the oxygen on this carbon over here. And at the same time that the migration happens, uh, an OH group leaves. And then finally, there's a protonation that replaces the boron. So it's actually a pretty complicated mechanism. Uh, basically, the only way to learn this is just to stare at it and then take a blank piece of paper and try to write it down and then check it. Uh, and you might just be tested directly on this mechanism. So you should know the mechanism, but like I said, if they don't ask you for the mechanism, the only parts that are really worth writing down are the parts that I have on the board. And also, again, the second language book really talks through all the steps of this mechanism, so that would be a good thing to read through as well. But the important parts are the parts at the bottom. What's the stereochemistry? Well, two syn addition products. I shouldn't have said cis addition, I should have said syn addition. Two syn addition products. And most important, the regiochemistry. The boron uh, adds to the less substituted carbon, so then eventually the alcohol adds to the less substituted carbon. And also very important is synthetic utility. We always want to know when to use these reactions in the synthesis. Well, if you want to make an alcohol with the OH on the less substituted carbon, then this is the way to go. If you want to make an alcohol with the OH on the more substituted carbon, then this hydration reaction is the way to go. So you want to learn these together. In fact, I think I said that here on the handout. Compare this with hydration, the alkene plus the hydroxide and water. That gives us the Markovnikov. Okay, now this is an important reaction, so before we go on, let's do another example. Let's do another example of hydroboration and oxidation. Let's do this reaction here. 
And let's show as much of the mechanism as I had on the board before. We don't have to go through the whole mechanism, but let's show the parts of the mechanism that I had on the board before. Now, it's true that deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen, but they still count as two different groups for purposes of stereochemistry. Although deuterium has similar reactivity to hydrogen, they definitely count as two different groups for purposes of stereochemistry. In fact, the whole reason why it's useful to put in the deuterium is to get stereocenters without adding more stereokindrons. This is a good way to make problems if you want to make a stereocenter without more stereokindrons. Actually, now that I think about it, I didn't even need the deuterium here, though. Uh, because this would have been a stereocenter even with hydrogen. I've made this more complicated than it had to be. But anyway, if there is a deuterium, you have to show that. Deuteriums are not like hidden hydrogens. You have to show the deuteriums if they're there. So I believe both of these are stereocenters. Both of these are stereocenters. Both of these carbons are attached to two different groups. So here we get more practice with the stereochemistry for hydroboration and oxidation, which is very likely to be tested. Both the regiochemistry and the stereochemistry would probably be tested for this reaction. So at this point, you should draw two separate products. These are definitely different from each other over here. Now, in this case, I put this boron on the wedge. So why did I put the hydrogen on the wedge? Sin. And why are they sin? They're, from the same molecule. they're both coming in from the same molecule. The mechanism here shows why they should both come in from the same direction. It might really help to keep circling the things that are added. Now, of course, you can actually get full credit without even showing the hidden hydrogen. You don't have to show hidden hydrogens, but it's probably a good idea here to put in the hydrogen so that you'll think clearly about the stereochemistry. So here's a case where it's better to show the hydrogen even though it's not technically necessary. So here we have the two syn addition products. And of course, the boron ends up down here because there's less stereochindrons. Deuterium has much less stereochindrons than methyl. And here, then we replace the boron with the OH group. 
And we've seen that there's actually quite a complicated mechanism that replaces the boron with the OH group. That's all in the handout, so you can work on that on your own. But here I just replaced the boron with the OH group. And now notice that up here, the boron was on a wedge, and here the OH is also on a wedge. Why? Because we've simply memorized that this happens with retention of configuration. We've just memorized that this step is retention of configuration. So wherever the boron was, that's where the OH should be. And we had another picture where the boron was on a dash, so in this picture, the OH is on a dash. So we end, it ends up as if we'd done a syn addition of H and OH. It ends up as if we'd done a syn addition of the H and the OH. The H and the OH end up on the same side. And again, you'll think through this more clearly if you show the hidden hydrogen, rather than just keeping it behind the scenes in your mind. So this shows the importance of both regiochemistry and stereochemistry for this hydroboration and oxidation uh, reaction. Of course, if we use sulfuric acid and water, we would have ended up with the alcohol on the top carbon, because that's Markovnikov. Okay, good. 